Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm going to talk about random stuff. We're probably getting our first v2 packages in, in the standard library here soon. I'm sure everyone's as excited as I am that it'll be math ran v2. Uh, not much is changing with the new API, but one thing that is changing is we will have multiple source implementations. That means where before you just call new source, you'll now have multiple options to choose from. Now, I, for some reason, have studied random number generators for a long time. And I have a pretty good idea of how to make this kind of choice deliberately, both in terms of the criteria to think about and the approaches that are available. Now, we do want to keep in mind that these are pseudo random number generators, right? These are fake random in particular ways. Some algorithms are better than others. And I think we have some intuition about what we expect randomness to be. I prefer to formalize that intuition, and I have a list of criteria that I think about. The first one, owing to my background in mathematics, is uniformity or statistical quality. Here we're asking if we take measurements across a huge number of outputs from the PRNG, do we get results that we would get from a random distribution? The state of the art in uniformity is the Mersenne twister, or one of its many variants. Today, if you ask for random numbers in Python, R, MATLAB, Microsoft Excel, dozens of other environments, you're probably using Mersenne twister. And its most popular configuration, not only is every number uniform, so is every pair of numbers, every group of three, and so on, all the way up to groups of 623 numbers. Most groups of 624 numbers never appear in the sequence. And in fact, once you see 624 numbers, you can do a bit of straightforward math and figure out the internal state of Mersenne Twister. From there, not only can you predict every number that it will produce, you can also reverse the sequence and see every number that it has produced. Not really a concern if you're using Mersenne Twister for a numerical simulation, but if you're, for some reason, using it to generate cryptographic nonsense for encryption, don't do that. Right? That's why the second kind of randomness is the unpredictable kind, or the cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generator. The idea here is that someone observing your outputs should never gain information about what's coming. And the state of the art here is ChaCha20. This is the foundation of dev U random on Linux and most BSDs. Now, ChaCha20 is a secure block cipher with a 256-bit key, so it takes some effort to figure out its internal state. Problem it has is you don't need 256 bits of security to see whether Shadowheart passes a DC14 intimidation check. Right, it's just heavier than what you need a lot of the time. Partly for that reason, MathRenv2 includes ChaCha8 instead. It's the same algorithm, just running fewer iterations of its loop, still considered cryptographically secure, although less popular among cryptographers, but it is more competitive as a fast generator. And when you don't need super strong guarantees about uniformity and you don't need cryptographic security, you probably just don't want to spend a lot of resources on your randomness. The state of the art in efficiency is well, there's not really a single winner, right? Efficiency is by definition a ratio of terms, and there are multiple things that can go in both the numerator and the de denominator. It is worth highlighting PCG DXSM, though, as the second generator in MathRan v2, as well as the default generator in NumPy. Now, these generators, in order to achieve efficiency, are compromising on some things, right? For one thing, they're gonna have small state sizes. Uh, less data to touch means less time spent touching data, but thanks to information entropy, you can't be more uniform than you have bits of state. They're also going to be based on really simple math, uh, fewer operations means less time spent operating, but typically easy to take just, just a few outputs and figure out the internal state. Right? The point of these is really throughput. Now, we've talked about the, uh, the criteria and the approaches. How do we actually apply this knowledge? Well, here's an output from Zero. It's a program that I wrote in Go uh, to start off with random numbers, do a bit of math on top, and make pretty pictures. For a program like Zero, it is possible to choose a wrong PRNG. Internally, it's surprisingly simple for what it does. Uh, we use a lot of random numbers in a tight CPU-bound loop, and we want a lot of PRNGs doing it, but we're competing uh, for memory with other things. In other words, we want fast and small. The question is, do our other criteria matter more? Let's think about uniformity. Zero is internally a random graph walk, and that is typically exactly where you want a high-quality pseudo-random number generator to make sure that you're taking every path through the graph with the right probability. That said, in zero, our graphs are really small. Uh, the efficient PRNGs are still pseudo-random. They still appear random by most metrics. And most importantly, we're doing art, not mathematical proofs. And so it's worth experimenting with PCG versus Mersenne Twister 
and we find that it's visually indistinguishable. Do we care about security or unpredictability? Well, no. Zero is not a cryptographic application, so I prefer not to use a cryptographic primitive. That said, it is totally fine to take Cha Cha 8, uh, or sorry, to take security as just an added benefit with Cha Cha 8. It's fast enough to do so, you probably should prefer it for most uses. But we do have size as a metric, and Cha Cha 8 is almost 20 times larger than PCG. Still not huge, about 300 bytes, but if we have that metric, then we should have a reason to choose against it. In this case, again, running experiments, they're visually indistinguishable. There's not a reason to choose against PCG here. Now, Mathrn v2 isn't actually released yet, so I have to implement my own PRNG anyway. I chose Z Zoshiro just by coincidence at the time. Uh, PCG also works fine. Uh, so yeah, that's an example of the thought process. Uh, of course, every application has its own, ooh, I dinged. Uh, every application has its own requirements, and uh, obviously, if you need security, then you need security. There's no way to get around that. Uh, hopefully, this information helps you uh, think about the right things when making this kind of decision yourself. Thank you. <laughs>